we've got yet another Nilfgaardian game. I've been really, you know, enjoying playing Nilfgaard lately. It's about <laughs> the only way I'm getting any enjoyment of playing lately, actually. Uh, so um, there's an important bit that I'm going to get to at the end, but uh, until then, I'm just going to follow along with this. So I'm using Calvate right here to pull for that uh, that last rate that I know I have in my deck. It was a bit of a lucky pull there to to get it, but it's all fun. Usually I want to have last rate in my opening hand, but that's fine too. It's just so damn satisfying to be able to get rid of all three of those very difficult to deal with uh, dudes otherwise. And get, you know, annihilate any semblance of that value. And here, it's a it may seem a little bit early to use Vilgaforts, but at the same time, uh, being able to, like, I'm just shutting down their strategy of, like, whittling my strength down. And instead, like, sailing ahead with just even more tempo, just pounding and pounding and pounding with tempo. And uh, as you'll see here in a second, it's going to be, it's going to prove to be just too much. Because they're getting no return on this, um, on their plays, and I'm only getting a big return. It just creates this like this unreachable gap. And as you can see, they pass because they know they can't pass it in uh, two cards anyway. They, I mean, I feel like that was a bit of an early pass. They probably could have kept going, but they have a they have a bigger uh, strategy. Right. And we're going to this next round on the same car, uh, same amount of cards, which is really, really good. Obviously, it's not as good as plus one card advantage winning around, but going the same card is fine. Going uh, minus one card uh, advantage is fine as well. Okay, and so basically the whole plan of this round is to just bleed them out as much as possible. I know I have a pretty good round three with stuff like Rain Farn, uh, and I can even use my 10 strength gold body, things like that. Uh, because if you haven't figured it out already, this is a relatively... Uh, what do you, what would you call it? It's kind of, I know the exact name of the deck. It's, it's Scorch Goatowl, but it, the tools it uses are kind of mid rangey kind of control. Like, uh, with that, uh, that dwarf that moves people, that's kind of more of a mid range instead of control. Anyway, I think, I think it's a really neat deck. I actually kind of want to create it. It's a little bit risky because you have to play it very carefully and very well, but it seems like fun. I also think it's really creative. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you're if you're thinking like creative as in how many how many scorches could I possibly work into the stack? And I'm pretty sure I get scorched like literally five times because <laughs> you have the regular scorch. You have the ethne scorch. You have Shiru scorch. And then you have uh, Villa Trent uh, scorch. So going into this round, right, I'm just trying to use Rot Tossers as much as possible and draw out his, um, I'm not trying to draw anything specifically out. I'm just trying to play the round a little bit more because obviously if I get hit by Scorches, I'm going to fall really far down in tempo. So there's a Shiryu, or rather, I didn't explain that well. If he uses Scorches in round three, that's significantly worse than he uses if he uses Scorches earlier because by the time of round three, like every, every point of strength, matters right and if i start losing units and it's not you know i'm just gonna lose because that's my only hope right i'm still not explaining that well how can i better explain that why is it that using scorches early is better than using scorches late and also check out that raw tosser value it's good stuff and then i i get i think i just go ahead and pass there yeah it's kind of unfortunate that my uh my uh whatchamacallit impaired brigade lined up so well with the spy but it's not a big deal and he uses his score to get 24 value casually i was really hoping it would take him an extra card to overcome that but it's not a big deal i'm still going to round three a card up which is what the whole goal was Oh wait, no, no, I wasn't trying to get him to play an extra card. I wanted him to play a Scorch and then play another Scorch like with Death or something. That would have been the most ideal. Okay, so now that we're going to round three, I feel like I've adequately uh, used his remove options. Also, it's very unlucky for me that she drew into that uh, Siri Dash, which also was a really good card in that deck. Who would have thought? 
unless you have like shackles or something, that's going to be difficult. And also I heard there's like new changes coming uh, to some effect that uh, golds won't have their immunity anymore, which would be interesting. Oh, and going back to like round one. So I didn't use my draw tossers until I saw that he used a movement dwarf guy. Uh, Cause you know, they'll just, or if at, at the very least I needed to have, no matter what happens, I, that raw tusher goes off and it hits something. That was the whole plan. So it's something I kind of watch out for going, oh, this is the moment. Okay. <laughs> I almost missed it. So this is the whole reason I uh, recorded this game and, you know, I'm doing commentary on, besides the fact that, you know, this is a pretty interesting matchup, I think. Um, <clears throat> so why the hell did I just play spy over there, right? Uh, conventional knowledge would say you don't use a spy on round three because giving your opponent 10 strength. Uh, to draw a card is usually not worth it unless you have some way of taking advantage of the fact that they have a 10 strength uh, body on their side of the board, right? So if you have a lot of control options, like in right of it or something, then maybe you do. But uh, also, I probably could have done something like maneuvering the broad tosser to hit the spy or something like that. But that's, you know, that's not, that's not the whole point. The whole point that I use that spy is because I know he has scorch options, right? He still has ethne. He has a villain Trent to Mirth. He's going to get a Scorch off. And uh, currently, I have a, uh, a Rot Tosser, I have a Peter, and I have an Ambassador, right? All of those options are going to... Everything that I'm going to play potentially puts me over uh, that six strength that she has on her side of the board, Right? Yeah, because if I use Peter, I use it on either my raw tester put, puts it above, or put, I use it on her uh, her elf, which puts it below. Ambassador uh, buffs my guys up. So the whole point is I'm trying to use that spy to soak up a Scorch. If it only uh, soaks up one Scorch, I win, right? So conventional knowledge would say not to play that spy. But I played it anyway because I know I can get her to... I can get that spy to be a lightning rod for any Scorches. And as you can see, I'm... 28 points behind right now use uh <laughs> save herself six strength she could have just used that on the rod tosser but i mean uh yeah the rod tosser itself not the cow it doesn't really matter okay and i'm still uh now that he's used ethne i can safely start uh buffing up my uh my my rod tosser dude because i know villain trent to is gonna hit that 10 strength unit and then he's not gonna have any other ways to scorch me presumably Okay, and uh, minus 20 strength. I don't know what that last card in his hand was. Am I, was that another Scorch? I don't know. <laughs> so, anyway, so by this point, <laughs> yeah, I have the win. Uh, so basically, that's just another way to use this buy, right? Uh, it was pretty lucky for me that... Like, the it kind of ended up... At, like, I, I had such a huge advantage from going one card up. Going to round three, and then I bled out just enough in round two to get to that point. So in other words... I feel like I didn't get my point across that well. That's kind of the problem with these vault reviews. Like, I want to get a specific point across, but sometimes I don't really find the words to do so. Creative usage of a spy can win or lose games. It's kind of like the neat little package that you can wrap it up as, but I don't think that's good enough. Using wisdom to outwit your opponents. Yes, I like that better. It's conventional, like I said before, conventional wisdom would not dictate playing a spire on round three, but because I know I'm playing against Scorch Go a Towel using uh, knowledge, and then I can subvert that advantage using wisdom by going for a less a low EV play uh, for a high EV play in the future. Yes. All right, that's better. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs>